Hello, this video will show the new settings windows interface in Sierra Chart. Let us start by going to global settings and opening up one of the new settings windows, data and trade service settings, that will be one. And the next we will open the chart settings by going to chart and then chart settings. Okay, the first main advantage with these windows is that they are modeless. They can be opened and interacted with while also interacting with other areas of the Sierra Chart software. This is a big advantage compared to what was there previously um, in the case that you need to reference settings from two different charts at once or just simply change settings or work within settings windows at the same time. We can also place them anywhere we want on our screen and when we reopen them, all of the settings, including the widths of the columns, the size of the window will be remembered. It will open exactly the same way that you closed it. The next major advantage is that these windows are fully customizable in regards to their color settings and font settings. And they are also, like we said, resizable. And you can also resize the individual columns. So let's say we resize this window, then close the window, then reopen it. You can see that the width has been saved. The next thing we can show is adjusting the column widths and where we have these column separator lines, we can see that when we hover our pointer over it, it highlights in red. We need to click the left mouse button and hold and drag until we're comfortable with the width and then release the left mouse button when you're comfortable with that. And that setting will be remembered every time you close and reopen the window. The next thing we can show is the color customization and the font customization. So we'll select global settings, graphics settings, global, scroll down until we find the items for the settings windows. So right here are all of the color options for the settings windows and pretty much every item can be customized and change the color. So we'll just change one color as an example. We've changed the color of the text and then we'll change it back to white. To change the fonts for the settings windows, it's done in the fonts tab. Go to the bottom settings windows, select it. And this is where we choose the font, the font style and the font size, as well as any other additional options. Once you're comfortable with that, you select OK. And we can choose OK to close that window. Now we can show some of the common features with these settings windows. So for example, the chart settings window, you can see that we have multiple tabs here at the top and each one is showing a specific category of settings. For example, settings related to the symbol and the symbol settings will be found here. Settings related to the market depth for our chart will be found here. We can also enter a search text for a particular setting and it will populate this list with the list of settings we can change based on the text you've typed in. It will bring you to the correct tab. There is an optional column called the show original values column. We can enable that by selecting view and show original values. This is the column. What this column shows us is when we change a setting by selecting a setting and then clicking it another time, you can see here in the original values column, it shows us the previous value before we had made the change. Now, at the moment that we are seeing this, there's an asterisk being displayed over the setting that is indicating to us that this setting that we've changed has not yet been applied. If we press the apply all key, the asterisk will disappear. And now the setting will be fully applied into the value field. And once you've applied a setting, there is no way to revert it back to what it was previously. The button here for revert all will only work before we have applied a setting. So in the case that you change a setting, it has been entered into the value field, but you can see there's an asterisk there indicating that the setting has not yet been applied and you want to change it back. You can select revert all and it will revert the setting back to what it was originally. Cancel would be the equivalent of doing that, but it would also close the window at the same time. Selecting OK would accept any settings that had not been applied, and it will also close the window. Apply All will apply the settings that you've changed, but it will not close the window. Some useful keyboard shortcuts, if we select a setting and change it to a different value, 
when you want to apply that new value into the value field, we press the enter key on our keyboard and you can see now that the value has been entered into the field, but it is not yet applied. So we'll apply it. If we are in the state of changing a value and we press the escape key, it will delete the changes we've made and just simply revert it back to the setting that it was. If we press the escape key when a setting has been applied or when we were not in um, setting changing mode like this, it will actually close the window because there's nothing selected. So it'll just close the window out. There are also settings that can be changed to adjust the user interface behavior of these settings windows. Those can be found in the global settings, general settings, then select the settings windows tab. And here we can adjust various aspects of the user interface behavior. By default, they should come in something like this if you have not changed them. And what is important to know is that there are different types of value fields. The first one is the toggle field, which would be like a yes or no field like this. And by default, one click editing of these settings is not enabled. So you actually need to click once to select the setting and then you need to click on the right side in the value field, not on the left. That will not do anything if you click on the setting name. You need to click in the value field box and when the setting is selected and you click here, it will change it. Now, this can be adjusted so that the setting does not need to be selected and you just simply click once and it will change it to yes or no. That would be this first setting right here. Use single click for yes, no in settings window when not selected. If we enable this setting and then apply it, we will now see that when we go into another settings window and click, you can see that it can change things to yes just with one click. So that will be up to the user to determine if they want to enable these or not. You can see there are different options for the different type of uh, value fields that are edited in Sierra chart the list box, the editable list box, the buttons, and the color controls as well. Um, select all text in edit control upon editing. When this is enabled, when you select an edit control where there needs to be a typed in value or typed in text, when you select it, it will highlight the entire value so that when we just start typing, it will delete that text already. If we don't enable this, then you can see now, when we select that, it places a spacer at the beginning and we will not have the whole thing selected by default. So that's a user interface behavior that can be changed, which is very good. There's also support for enabling the mouse scroll wheel to select settings in a settings window. We'll enable that. And you can see here now, when we use our scroll wheel, we can scroll through various settings. And there are also other keyboard shortcuts for scrolling through the settings. We'll just quickly show how you can find the documentation for the settings windows on sierrachart.com, select documentation, table of contents, and then we need to find settings windows. And the two documentations, the first one is the settings windows interface. And the second one will be the chart settings, but specifically new chart settings window which will explain the implementation of the new user interface for the chart settings. And the settings windows interface will just generally go over the uh, user behavior like we've covered in this video. So thank you and we'll see you in the next video, bye.